So Apple quietly launched their new M5 chip in their 14 inch MacBook Pro last week. There was no Apple event, no fancy video release. It's the same design and it was just a press release on their website. The M5 chip is a leap forward, but it isn't even the most powerful chip in Apple computers at the moment. And so while this upgrade and innovation may not be the one that pushes the limits of what's possible with computing these days, nor will it be the one that generates the fancy headline, I think this laptop is an enormous win for people who are looking for enormous performance at a reasonable price. And that my friends is what we're talking about in today's video. Even as I was unboxing the new MacBook 14 inch, it was pretty clear it looked exactly like its M4 predecessor. It's the same reliable design for the MacBook Pro that we've seen over the last three plus years. The same ports, the same chassis, the same notch. Previously I had used the silver MacBook Pro 16 inch, but I gotta say this space black color looks really cool and stealthy. Um, much nicer than the previous iteration of Space Gray, in my opinion. As usual, the keyboard, trackpad, screen, all rock solid and great to use. But what's new here with this laptop is not what's on the outside, but what lies beneath the hood, the M5 chip. Now, before I get into my thoughts after testing the M5 chip for a brief period of time, I think it's worth asking, who is this laptop for? Now, I think this laptop sits alongside a couple other laptops in its line, and it's targeted towards three groups in particular. You firstly got students who are gonna be using a laptop to make visual presentations, to write up reports, to conduct research and take notes, to do some brief design, maybe generating a poster, maybe doing a bit of processing on a spreadsheet, generating graphs, etc. Just the usual things that I think a lot of students are looking for. The second group of people who are gonna really benefit from this are creators. And I'm drawing a line between creators and creative professionals, which comes next. By creators, I mean people who are posting content on YouTube, on Instagram, who need a laptop that's capable of handling the work that comes in generating social media content, whether that be editing videos, whether that be editing photos, or whether that be designing content and all the effects that go into all of that. And then finally, we've got people who are dabbling in the space of professional creative work. So not the seasoned professionals who are looking for super high-end tech, but the people who are sort of dabbling into it. So for example, a filmmaker who's starting out, a person who's starting out a video production company and wants to do video editing, music producers who want to use Logic Pro to produce and process a soundtrack, uh, someone who's working really hard to be a professional designer, or someone who really wants to see the limits of what's possible with photo editing. Essentially the kind of work that's created at a high quality for clients and needs to be done at a reasonable speed. And when I lay out these three things here, I'm not talking about them individually. I'm talking about individuals that occupy at least two out of these three roles. And I think for those people, when it comes to upgrading and getting a new computer or laptop, the main competitor to this new MacBook Pro, I reckon is the MacBook Air with M4 chip. I've got a MacBook Air here with M2 chip and I have used this for the last two and a half years. It is a remarkable computer. I edit photos, I edit videos, I do presentations, posters, a lot of professional work on here. It would be my choice of laptop if I was to go back and be a student. The one area it sort of falls short in is when I'm really pushing it in terms of video editing. Um, exporting files takes a bit of time. I'm normally patient, but if I want a quick change, that might take a bit of time. And then finally, when I am batch exporting a large amount of photos. But I can see with this M5 MacBook Pro, it handles all those tasks I just described like a breeze. Um, and so I'm speaking from my personal experience as someone who has occupied all three of those roles that I stated earlier. In the minimal testing that I have done over the last four days, this is pretty impressive. It handles all those tasks very seamlessly. 
each GPU graphics processing unit now has a thing called a neural accelerator. That's just a new word Apple has invented, but essentially what they've factored into this chip is hardware and technology that is built for AI that can be done locally on your computer. The challenge with testing out the software is we don't have a whole lot of software that's out there that's optimized to make use of this. But for example, there is this photo editing software called Topaz Photo Editor, and it's able to take a low resolution photo and upscale it to a high resolution image. And the speed increase in that is unbelievable. And it's all using AI locally on your computer. So it's a thing that I'm gonna be so keen to test out going forward. I can see Apple releasing this so that developers can get their hands on it and hopefully develop more apps. The SSD, so the storage in the computer is also much faster when it comes to reading, writing, copying files, etc. When it comes to CPU heavy tasks, general computing tasks like answering and responding to emails, browsing the web, writing up documents, making presentations, putting effects in Keynote, using Notion, having multiple apps open at the same time. Like this computer breezes through all of that. I think we're past the stage where computers lag with those sort of tasks open. And I think that was true even for the M4 and the M3 chip. As I said earlier, the places where I am noticing such a helpful improvement is firstly in the ability of this laptop to handle multiple layers of 4K footage in a Final Cut Pro timeline and just be able to scrub through that very quickly. When I speed up footage, when I slow down footage, when I use the AI masking tool in Final Cut Pro to select my subject, that often takes a lot of time. I feel like it's a bit faster now. I also think the speed with which it exports photos from Lightroom that have been edited and batch is smooth and breezy and quick. I think one more thing to note is even if you're not pushing the chip to its potential, because it is so efficient, the battery life on this thing is probably the best it's ever been on a MacBook. I charged this laptop to 100% last night and I've been using this laptop all day. I went and checked how many hours I've been using it. It's around six to seven hours and it still has 76% of charge left. So if you were to do the maths, it does meet that all day 24 hour battery life when it comes to these basic tasks. Now I'm sure that time will go down the more intensive the tasks are, but the battery life here, it is outstanding. And, and to be honest, coming from the MacBook Air, which is slim and sleek, this is such a big upgrade. And final thing, thermals are really well managed here and they have been quite well managed by the M series of chip for the last you know, four years. And, and so I'm keen to see what do I need to put this thing through to get it you know, really warm and get those fans firing so that it's actually at its limits. Probably something I'll discover in the coming few weeks. To conclude, I said this earlier, but yes, this is a significant improvement in chips for Apple, but these aren't the most powerful chips Apple are making at the moment. The M4 Pro and definitely the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra probably are significantly more powerful than the M5 chip. But all those chips exist at the very top tier of Apple's laptop and computer line. This price point though of $1,600 or in Australia, $2,500, you do not get a laptop with better performance. Just for context, in 2017, when I was just getting into video editing for the first time, my parents got a really highly specced MacBook Pro. And it was a really slim model at the time without the HDMI port or the SD card slot. And I think we spent around 4,000 Australian dollars on it. So that's around 2,600, 2,700 US dollars. And I remember every single time I had put 4K footage into it, the fans would go off, the computer would get super hot to the point where it would freeze. And I would need to go to the fridge or the freezer, bring an ice pack, put it underneath the computer just to cool it down so it could scrub through the footage. And that was a laptop that was almost double the price of this one here. I think when we look at these upgrades from year to year, they seem very incremental and insignificant. But if you can just zoom out and see the sorts of things people were asking for five to six years ago, we are spoiled today with the tech that we have. I don't think anyone with a functioning laptop that meets their needs should update to this at the moment. But for example, if you're on the M1 or the M2 line, and you feel like you're pushing the limits of your performance and you want something else, this is a pretty good option. And naturally, if you're at that stage where you're looking for a new MacBook, check this out, I think it's a pretty good option. 
I will say though, this is the base version of the chip. I'm sure that in the coming year, Apple will probably release an M5 Pro and an M5 Max. So if you are that creative professional who's doing really, really intense workloads at a really high level, you might wanna wait for those chips. Just to put things in context as well, if you know the Apple TV show Severance, that kind of took off earlier this year, um, that is a Apple TV show with a budget of $20 million per episode. There were 10 episodes. It was a really big thing. That was edited on an iMac, a Mac mini, and a MacBook Pro. And if I was to do the maths correctly, it was around about the time they were using the M2 and the M3 chips. And so those chips were able to handle a studio level production. And so just keep that in mind. Um, often the tech that you have is all the tech that you need. So you guys, I actually think this MacBook Pro M5 chip is a remarkable product in a quiet way in that I think for people who are in the tech community, who are reviewing tech, who are looking for something that is so distinct from anything else that has come before, I don't think there's much to say about it. But for people who are looking for great performance at an affordable price, there's nothing that comes close to this model. I'm always happy to see uh, when Apple isn't just pushing up the ceiling, but raising the floor and bringing incredible capabilities down to their lowest line of product. Oh, and by the way, if you do love the slim form factor of the MacBook Air, just know Apple will probably put the M5 chip into it in the coming year. So if that's what you're looking for, keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about this MacBook Pro, let me know down in the comment section below or questions about the Mac in general. But apart from that, I will see you in the next video.